to the first podcast uh, from Cloud 2020 Insights, we're calling this. Um, 2020 Insights is the name of our partner engagement program, and we're hoping to bring you some interesting, some factual, some helpful, and some useful chat and um, information via various methods, really. And this is the first part of it. It's a podcast. It'll literally be 20 minutes of your time. So we're hoping that you'll grab a coffee and join us. Um, it will be interactive eventually, and we're hoping that we'll get some um, in, in some observations and some opinions from you. You can always tweet us at, at Cloud2020. We also have a Facebook page, and I'm sure you know our email address, but I'll give you it right now. Hello at cloud2020.co.uk and I'll repeat all that information at the end. So it's our first time. It was a bit exciting. We got very excited here. Um, but I'm going to introduce you to Lucy Bourne, who I suspect most of you won't need introducing to. So Lucy is an account manager here. She is the account manager, actually. She's our go-to for information about everything. And um, today we've managed to get her part of her busy schedule and she's going to talk to us about the relationship assistant part of her Dynamics 365 CRM. Very useful Lucy, I'm looking forward to hearing about it. So can I hand over to you now Lucy and you to tell us all about the relationship assistant. Absolutely, thank you Wendy. So I'm just going to share my screen with you so you can see uh, the relationship assistant in action. So I'm sure you'll all be familiar with what Dynamics 365 looks like and the consistent experience with which the dashboards are. So in summary, they're designed to be these snapshots of information that are most important to you. Now, one of the new features, as Wendy mentions, is this relationship assistant, which rather than reminding you to buy flowers for your husband or your wife, really does analyze all of the records that you have any relationship with within Dynamics and makes assessments on what it thinks the next step you should take should be. So right now we're looking at the sales activity social dashboard. This is standard out of the box dashboard, which quite often we tweak on behalf of our clients or on behalf of your clients. But this very, very much is out of the box. And what you'll notice is on the left hand side, we have our sales pipeline, very consistent, looking at our opportunities by their stage and the value that they are. But next up in the central panel, we have our relationship assistant, the new feature. And you'll notice that the relationship assistant is made up of, in this instance, two cards. And these cards have been presented to me because there is action that Dynamics thinks I should take. So in this instance, you can see the first card demonstrates that I've received an email to my inbox using server-side sync that Dynamics has picked up on and has found an action within it. In this instance, a meeting looks like it needs to be scheduled and Dynamics is encouraging me to either create that meeting or indeed open up that email in um, Outlook Online in order to see that email in more detail or indeed create the meeting. And so it's really simple and just encouraging me to take that next step without me even having to open up my inbox. Now in this instance it might be the case that I actually do want to create that meeting or indeed it's not vital for me to take this action now, so I've got a couple of options in the top right-hand corner of my card. First up, I've got my snooze, so I can do this and it'll, this card will pop up in 12 hours, or indeed I can just use the cross and get rid of that action that um, Dynamics has, has suggested to me. Next up, you'll see that it's also read another email of mine that's, got, that's marked as important and has asked me to take an action and open that email and reply to it. Again, I can either snooze it or I can get rid of it completely. Now, one of the most common questions people ask me around the relationship assistant is, can I tailor it to demonstrate just information or actions that are unique to our com company? And absolutely, you can. By default, Dynamics and the relationship assistant is looking out for records, for example, on opportunities, opportunities that are coming to an end that you might want to take action on, accounts. How often do you normally speak to contacts at accounts that then require additional action. Um, so for example, you normally speak to people within an account every three weeks and you haven't in this instance, so remind me to, to follow up with them. And this relationship assistant is not only useful within my dashboard environment as we're looking at now, but also within individual account and contact records. So taking Joe at Lone Star Technologies, I'm going to use my global search to find the contact that I'm perhaps having a conversation with. Um, let's 
that's fine, Joe. That load stop. I'm having a conversation with him, him on the phone. I've used my global search to find that contact from which I can do normal actions such as read previous email conversations that have been presented and tracked into Dynamics. And you'll notice that the relationship assistant sits within the central panel of the contact within the social pane. And I, can, I may have more than one action with which to complete and I can snooze and I can get rid of this relationship assistant card as I wish. So in summary, the relationship assistant is essentially analyzing all of the records within Dynamics and making suggestions on the next step. Again, it's something that we can tailor to the client's requirement um, and really increase the productivity of all Dynamics 365 users. So that's all from me. I'll now hand back over to Wendy, who will pass you on to my colleague Ian. Good morning, everybody. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can. Thank you, Ian. Thanks for joining us. I know you're a busy guy, and you're probably all getting ready to go off to WPC, aren't you? Yes, indeed, Wendy. Yeah, thanks Which is for known the, uh... as Inspire now, isn't it, actually? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So um, I, I was going to briefly talk about Inspire, or, or work, the World Partner Convention, as it was known up until the end of, the end of the past year. And, and explain why I think it's such an important thing, uh, opportunity for uh, for partners to get really engaged with Microsoft. Um, I actually uh, went to my first WPC six years ago. And on Sunday evening, there was a, a welcoming UK Microsoft team. And at that, at that party, within 15 minutes, I'd met more people from Microsoft in the UK than I ever had working with Microsoft all the previous years. And straight away I thought, gosh, that's really rather powerful. The following morning I went into the first plenary and there were 16,000 other people in that plenary. And within an hour I'm sitting there thinking, if I hadn't come here and been sat here today, I would not know what I don't know. It was just really quite a, a, a watershed moment for me. So this year, uh, Inspire, as I say, uh, Sasha Nadella has changed the name of uh, the World Partner Convention to Inspire, and uh, this is its first year under that branding. It's going to be held in Washington, D.C., and it's the second week in July. Uh, I'm booked up and uh, ready to roll. Uh, I should actually be arriving on a Friday. I've got meetings booked uh, on Saturday and the Sunday uh, before the event even starts on the Monday, so already my uh, itinerary is absolutely jam-packed. Um, as I say, the, uh, it's been Washington a couple of times before, and I was there the last time I was in Washington. Beautiful, beautiful city, really nice and friendly, very close. Uh, and uh, last, last time I went there, I commuted entirely by bicycle. Uh, so they have the old Boris bikes there, and uh, that was a great way of getting around the city. So but the point is, well, why, why would you go? Well, first of all, if you want to hear anything about what is happening in Microsoft from the horse's mouth, you go to Inspire. If you bear in mind Microsoft's an annual uh, financial year, starts in July and ends in June. So this is the time they store things up to make the announcements. And at the plenaries, you will hear the comment, and I am proud to announce, or I am pleased to announce. You know then there's something about to be delivered. Obviously, you get to hear the likes of Satya Nadella, uh, and he is really insp inspirational. I have I've heard him numerous times now uh, in the UK and in the States, uh, and he seriously does engage. Um, on here, you've got Brad Smith, who is actually the president and also the chief legal officer. Now, you imagine chief legal officer dull, wrong, wrong. This guy, again, is very inspiring, and last, last year in particular, he spoke about how Microsoft are really taking security of, of uh, customers' data so seriously. And it's fascinating to listen to him talk about how he had uh, prevented action by, by governments wanting to get access to customers' data. There's lovely Gabriella Schuster. She is 
she leads the whole partnership team now, and if you bear in mind, over 96% of all Microsoft business is delivered through partners, and it's she that runs the partner channel. And I had the pleasure to meet her a couple of times last year, and she's absolutely delightful. The guy on the right on that picture actually is really fascinating. This guy is Rod Huddleston, and again, I met him a couple of times last year. He came from Salesforce, where he set up the whole of the Salesforce uh, uh, storefront, uh, he brought into Microsoft, he was rapidly promoted, he's now corporate vice president, and he is running the whole of Microsoft's customer experience program. Um, so watch out to see more from Ron Huddleston. So you get to hear from these people. Now, on this slide here, I've got various things here, but I want to pick out, first of all, bottom right, 16,000 people in one room. That's one big uh, plenary session, and there are three of those during the, during the uh, course of the week. Uh, the, the presentation is phenomenal. Top left is probably the guy I really, really hope is going to be speaking this year. He is a technical presenter, but he is the coolest guy on the planet. Uh, the way he presents technology is just phenomenal. And he, he always gets the opportunity to, to really show off uh, the latest technology for Microsoft. Top right there, you see HoloLens. So again, if you go to, go to WPC, you will see the real cutting edge stuff that is being being showcased. Uh, and that is just, just awesome in that big arena. And in this case here, the engineer uh, wearing the headset, she's explaining how they, diag they can diagnose uh, jet engines in three dimensions without actually having to bring an engine into the workshop. And then uh, bottom left, is, is another uh, really important point is this is the ability to meet up with providers and suppliers um, because there's a, a big exhibition there uh, and again you get to meet some providers that are offering latest cutting edge technology built on, on, on the Microsoft stack or working alongside it and that has been very powerful for us. So let's go back to why I think it's really important for Microsoft partners to so to be there. Clearly, you get the latest news and announcements, as I said, and they do store them up for that event. The other really important one is networking. I have had the opportunity to meet with partners and suppliers. So we, we get the ability to de deploy uh, technology into Dynamics 365, for example, based on partners that we've met and technologies we've seen at these kind of events. Met lots and lots of what, what potentially uh, co uh, uh, competitors, but they've now become partners through the networking. The networking is huge. There are something like 250 meeting tables uh, set up within the uh, within the Inspire. They're booked on half hourly slots, and they will be full for up to 11 hours a day. There are that number of meetings going on continuously. The other one is, is being able to get some in-depth knowledge. There are, I think, uh, between four and 500 uh, targeted uh, sessions there. Um, so you can go along and you then get to meet the, the people that design, develop, deliver, market, sell these technologies. And you can speak to these guys and get, get their, get their in-depth knowledge. I think most importantly for me, you get the ability to have some very strategic thinking time because you're immersed in this environment uh, with, with partners just like you who are selling uh, or using the technology, delivering it to customers, and it's a great time to, to, to have that thinking time. I know the team always get worried about when I come back, so it's what's, what's the next biggest uh, idea that is going to bring back that we've got to try and work with, but it is a really good time, and it's actually also astonishingly good fun. Yes, it's an expensive gig. It's two thousand dollars just to get through the door, and you've got to get to Washington. But without, without any shadow of a doubt, it pays dividends. Well, that's football for me. I'm going to pass back to Wendy now, and thank you for listening, guys. Thanks, Ian. That was fascinating. I, I think the one of the one of the things I really picked up on there was uh, the movement away from seeing other partners, other people working in the same industry as competitors, but moving that to collaboration. And I do think that when you get the opportunity to actually meet together like this, that's one of the great benefits of this kind of time. I also imagine that um, the strategic thinking time is, uh, is a wonderful thing. We're always being told, aren't we, as business people to work on the business as well as working in the business. And I think 
sounds like a great time to do all of those things. So thank you very much for joining us today and thanks very much to Lucy and Ian. If you'd like to know more about the Relationship Assistant then please do contact us if we can help you in any way to get the most out of your CRM system. We are very willing to do that. Um, just want to point you at a couple of sources of information about Cloud 2020. Um, so we are uh, now blogging regularly and you can find out what we have to say, the things we're interested in at uh, blog.cloud2020.co.uk. We're also on Twitter at cloud2020.co.uk. Um, you can email us hello at cloud2020.co.uk. We'd love to hear from you. We're really interested in how you found this uh, podcast, the kind of things you'd like to, to hear us address, and also, you know, what kind of coffee you're drinking as well. So until next month, which we will be bringing you live from Inspire, some of um, the, an opportunity to hear and get very close to some of the exciting things that are happening there. Um, that will be next month. Uh, we'll be sending out invitations and uh, we'll hope to see you there. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. <laughs>